Windjammer is also the buffet. And so that's where we went for every breakfast on the ship. I learned things that were gluten-free. There's a specific section for that, but there are also different areas that I knew were also gluten-free foods that I could eat. So I'm gonna show you what I ate for breakfast, lunch, and dinner while we were on the ship. Let's go look at that and you can get a better idea of some of the options that are available to you if you chose to sail on the Navigator of the Seas. Hi everyone, my name is Carrie. Welcome back to my channel. It may not be exciting to you, but for someone who's gluten-free, this might be something that puts your mind at ease knowing that there are food options available for you if you are on a gluten-free diet. Our first meal was around 1 p.m. on the first day of embarkation on the ship. The wind jammer was packed full of people, all with their luggage, waiting to get access to their staterooms. I asked a staff member where to find gluten-free food and was so excited to see that there was a special section set aside for gluten-free food. That was the first win of the day. Can I get a swirl in the bowl? I'm gluten-free. Thank you. I was so excited to have soft serve ice cream readily available and so I got some without a cone. My tummy immediately told me this was something I should not be eating. My appetizer on the first night was shrimp cocktail. I realized I forgot to take a picture on the first night. It was a New York strip steak with a baked potato and roasted vegetables, and it was delicious. Dessert was just as great. Breakfast again was in the wind jammer at the buffet. This was the view behind the boat. And this was the, all the options that were available on the gluten-free specific side of the table. And so this is what I decided to have. I have to admit, I realized right away that I did not like the scrambled egg mix. I know it's just something instant that they had. Not a fan of it, wouldn't have it again. For lunch, we went down to the Cafe Promenade to try their pizza that they had. And they have the gluten-free pizza offering. You do have to wait 20 minutes for it, but I think it's worth the wait. The egg salad, great. The bread, not so much. Dinner back in the main dining room. I had the iceberg wedge salad with blue cheese dressing. This was wonderful. The butternut squash soup had really no flavor, not a big fan of it, but the roasted beef tenderloin was delicious. The meat was cooked to my perfection level. And the creme brulee had a nice crusty top like it should and tasted awesome. This was a 70s night celebration, always entertaining to watch the crew dance. It's August, so for the last seven months, and I've really noticed a difference in my personal health by going gluten-free with my autoimmune diseases that I have. I really appreciated the options that were available to me, the variety that I had, and some of the specialty items that were specifically done for those of us that choose to eat gluten-free or need to eat gluten-free. I know this video is about the food, but I just loved sitting at the back of the Windjammer and watching the view of the ocean. This was the buffet for this day three, and this is what I decided to have for breakfast. I found eggs that were not scrambled, and that was a much better option, plus some fresh fruit. Here is Puerto Vallarta in the background. And before we got off, we went and had lunch, which we don't normally do, but this was what the options was at the Windjammer again for the gluten-free table, and so this is what I decided to eat. I didn't eat all of it, but I had some. To go with the Mexican theme, I had the tortilla soup, which they made for me gluten-free, the shrimp cocktail is always easy to do, and the chili lime crusted salmon also had mango on it. It was great. This was vegan ice cream, not my favorite. The view this morning is Mazatlan, and this was on the buffet option for this morning breakfast. I opted not to have any of this. I went to where they served yogurt and got the chopped up fruit with some almonds, and that was my breakfast. 
we were in an excursion for our afternoon lunch, so we ate with that company, but that's not part of Royal Caribbean, so I'm not gonna show the food. They told me they could make me French onion soup gluten-free. It was not worth it. The Caesar salad compensated for that. And tonight I had another steak. It was not as good as the first night. I did eat it, and you can tell I didn't take a picture of it. So you get to watch our staff entertain me. This was one of the highlights of meal time. We are in Puerto Vallarta this morning, looking out from the Windjammers back windows again. And this meal, I decided to have only my fruit. So I love that it's diced up for you. And they had roasted almonds to go on top. So great. We spent a couple of hours off of the boat and were able to make it back on the boat in time for lunch. And so where we decided to eat lunch this time was on the pool deck, deck 11, called El Loco Fresh, and it's a taco bar where you have whole different types of meat options and fresh guacamole. It was great. They also had this shortcake dessert. Tasted wonderful. We ate that as we sat in the adult-only section of the pool area, just looking out over the Puerto Vallarta. One of the nice things I did was I ordered my meal the night before so they could make sure that everything was gluten-free. So I had Caesar salad, there's this yummy cheese plate. Those are easy to do gluten-free, but I also got to have chicken parmesan and that was gluten-free. Now the chicken itself tasted great. The noodles, I'm not a big fan of gluten-free noodles, but I also got to have a coconut cream cake that was made specially for the gluten freeers. Oilers were playing tonight, and so we were able to watch it at the sports bar. So I went over and I had this wonderful lady tell me that there are snickerdoodle cookies. It's back there on the back shelf under a plate. You can't see them. You have to specifically ask for them. Well, these snickerdoodle cookies are to die for. I could have eaten them the rest of the trip. I love them, and I've searched for them ever since with no success. So if you know where to find these snickerdoodle cookies, please put it in the comment below and help me find them. This was the offering for breakfast at the Windjammer on day number six. I passed on all that and continued to have the fruit salad. It just, there's so much food and it's overfilling. For lunch, I went back to El Loco and had nachos. And then we did take a peek at the buffet for lunchtime. My husband was hungry for lunch. I wasn't feeling extremely hungry. Those were the desserts that they had just for the gluten-free. And so I did pick together a little bit of stuff to eat. The strawberry shortcake was great. The other one wasn't my favorite. I made the mistake of sharing these cookies with everyone else and they realized how great they were too. So every time we went by the Cafe Promenade, we stopped and grabbed a few of these cookies and shared them with everyone that we could. Tonight was one of the dress up nights. And so that meant that we were going to enjoy something fancy for dinner. It started with the shrimp cocktail. Yes, I'm a creature of habit and the Caesar salad. But the best part was tonight was when we got to enjoy the main lobster tail. Now, something great for me. My husband does not like lobster, so he ordered a plate and I got to eat his lobster tail. The strawberry shortcake was delicious. It was 80s party night tonight. The Windjammer breakfast buffet for the gluten freers looked like this. I made a little bit of a combination by going to get a sunny side up egg with the bacon and hash browns and some fruit salad on the side. We saw this menu had another wedge salad and that's what we picked eating at the main dining room for lunch this time. I was not impressed with the steak at all. It was not enjoyable. 
the salad was mainly what I ate. And, of course, the fruit melody at the end. We enjoyed the talent show before our dinner for the very last night. Can you tell I'm an Alberta landlocked girl that doesn't get a lot of seafood in my diet? The cheese plate, for whatever reason, was always so good, but this meal, the pecan crusted salmon, was delicious. I actually went and asked the chef what he put on it because the sauce was divine. Chocolate cake was great too. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for cruising with us. We sincerely hope that you have enjoyed the food and our service as much as we enjoyed serving each and every one of you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's truly been our pleasure. Thank you. Tonight, standing in front of you is a small part of our galley team representing the 200 chefs working behind the scenes. Chef and his galley team on a daily basis produce almost 15,000 meals each and every day. Not only in the dining room, but all around the ship food venues. This was our amazing wait staff we had the entire week. They were phenomenal. We went out for one final quick breakfast before we had to pack the rest of our bags and de-embark. This is what I had for breakfast on the very last day. And here's the view of the Los Angeles port. The last day of our cruise on Navigator of the Seas. And I just wanted to wrap this all up. I had great meals and I appreciated the number of options that were available to me eating gluten free. I have to admit between you and me that I was nervous about what kind of variety that I would have. Embarkation day. We spent a few days in California after our cruise, and one of the restaurants we ate at was Fat Cow. This was the best wrap I have ever had. And that sounds crazy, but it was so good. If you are near Fat Cells, go order this now so if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up i would love for you to like that video because it helps me know the content that i'm creating is something that you enjoy watching also if you're enjoying this content i would love for you to be a subscriber it helps me to grow my channel as this is something that i am love doing and hopefully you love watching it too there'll be a few other videos like this in the coming weeks and so stay tuned to next week to see another video about the navigator of the seas from a different perspective